working on a 2009 Jetta with a 2.5 liter engine. Uh, the customer complaint is a flashing check engine light, so we know we have a misfire. Uh, try to keep this low tech. And uh, right now what I want to do is identify which cylinder is misfiring using a cylinder drop test. All I'm going to do is unplug the coils. Alright, so one by one, just going to unplug each coil. No, no RPM change there. See a nice RPM drop. That cylinder is contributing. That cylinder is contributing. That cylinder is contributing. And that cylinder is contributing. What we have, cylinder number one, no contribution from cylinder number one. All right, so I just have my test light connected to a ground. If you can see that, touch battery positive. I get a light. I'm just gonna keep this low right now. We know that we have no contribution from it looks like cylinder number one. Just gonna take my test light, put it in there, start it up, see if we have spark. And what we have is no spark coming from this ignition coil. I just have my test light connected to a ground. You don't want to put it to battery ground. So no spark coming out of this coil for cylinder number one. What we have here is a four pin ignition coil. What we have is, should be power on pin one. Um, pin two and four are grounds. And then this purple wire is the control wire from the ECM. So what we can do with the key on, make sure we have voltage here. Check our ground. So this is just with key on. Pin one, I have a T-pin. And we have our 12.69 volts, that's good. Um, we'll go next, check the ground. Zero, zero, 001, check this other ground, point zero, zero, 001. We do the same checks with the car running, uh, being that we have no spark. Should be okay. <clears throat> Start it up. There's our pin one, our power feed. 13.8, 13, 13.9. 13, There's the ground. So for anyone that doesn't have this kind of equipment, what I want to do right now is pull my scope out put my fuse buddy in and look at my coil firings. Um, another way that we could do this, let's just unplug this guy. And we'll take 
coil from number two, put it in number one, number one and number two. And what we can do now is redo our cylinder drop test. And basically when we redo our drop test, if this cylinder number two is now not contributing, we know that this ignition coil is bad. So that's what we'll do when we start it up. I'll do number one first. RPM drop on number one now. No change. No change with this cylinder number two. So now we've confirmed low tech. We have no spark, one bad ignition coil. We didn't even need a scan tool. All we have was a test light and a voltmeter. And not even that, we could have done this originally and just swapped this coil over and redid our drop test. So now what I want to do, I'm going to break out the scope and uh, see actually what is wrong with this ignition coil. Okay, so what I have hooked up right here is my fuse buddy and it looks like I am in fuse Let's see here. F14 so F14 is for my ignition coils Maybe a, possibly a shorted secondary winding, maybe. See a little straight up and down line every once in a while. Let me zoom in a little bit. stop it and now we can zoom out <clears throat> and now what we have is a big picture of all of our coil firings and zoom what this tells us is that we do have control there's no missing current ramps even in uniform All right, so right off the bat, I don't really see anything that says, okay, this is what's wrong with it. So what I want to do is put a sink in with this number two ignition coil. I want to know when this faulty ignition coil is being controlled. I want to know which waveform that is. So I'm going to add an ignition sink in here, and we'll look at that waveform. Okay, so what I'm going to do here. We're going to go back to record. We're going to add a second channel. And we're going to change this to ignition. And this is all I got. I'm going to take the black lead to ground. I'm going to use my battery. I'm just going to put the tip of this lead in the center of the ignition coil. So now as you can see, this green trace is my secondary in this coil. Amp waveform is my primary. So what this would be is the turn on. the firing line and then the spark line would be in here so I'll just move over I don't really see anything wrong with this primary side 
me zoom you in a little bit closer. I'm gonna move over to a known good coil. I'll move over to cylinder three. And you can see the difference. So there's our turn on. This would be our firing line. And then this would be our spark line. We go back to the bad one. There's no spark line. So what we have is a an issue in the secondary winding, not shorted, maybe possibly open. Go back to a good one. This is cylinder three. We'll move down to cylinder four. Cylinder five. There's our bad one. And then cylinder one. So a secondary issue. I don't really see anything wrong with the amperage. Change the scale. Oh, you know what? Change my change my time base. Time base five milliseconds. I'm gonna move over. What I want to see is these turn on oscillations. I'm trying to hit this trigger right. bit closer. I'm going to move over to a good one. You can see that turn on just one big hump. A couple gradual ones. This is a this is a good this is cylinder three. Move back over cylinder two. Cylinder one, you can see the nice gradual turn on oscillations. I don't know if that's enough to. If I look at this waveform and I just see that, I'm like, oh, this is a secondary issue. I don't, I don't know if that's enough. But. So. Another simple one. Uh, I'm going to put an ignition coil in this um, and we'll take a look at that turn on oscillation one more time. New ignition coil. This yellow marking on it, but no VW part number, so potentially aftermarket junk. Start this thing up. No more misfire. We have some nice turn on oscillations. This is our cylinder number two. So whatever happens in the secondary affects the primary. <clears throat> Maybe it's a little bit different on these coilover plugs, but I don't think that spark was going anywhere. I think it was staying inside that primary. But that confirms it. Secondary winding issue. Doesn't look shorted, potentially open. 
are just not going anywhere, staying in that coil. And turn on oscillations are nice and smooth now. Those turn on oscillations are for the secondary winding. Whatever happens in the secondary does affect the primary. So that's what those oscillations are. But pretty simple. Those of you that don't have the tools, you don't have the scope, a couple easy checks. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and thanks for watching.